guys welcome back to my channel thank you so much for subscribing you know that it's something that i don't take lightly i appreciate every single one of you know i appreciate all of the views i appreciate it so much you wouldn't even know so thank you for coming back if you are new here please don't forget to subscribe uh click the notification bell so that you are among the first to know when i post a video so you can be a part of our family for real for real this time so we're gonna continue our investment series. The last two videos we did, I basically laid the foundation um, of investing and investments. I explained some terms, I explained um, certain conditions so that you will have the foundation done. Today, we're gonna continue on that journey, but we're gonna get a little bit dirty today. We're gonna, today we're gonna get um, into the numbers, into the nitty gritty of it. We're gonna talk about strategies. We're gonna talk about actually building an investment portfolio. So I think you should sit tight and just stay and watch because it's not something you wanna miss. I should say before I continue is guys no but let me say again I am NOT a licensed investment banker I am NOT a licensed investment advisor I am just somebody who may have do some things are investing for a couple of years now and it's been working so I feel like I should share this with you I've also read extensively on this topic so you know I picked up a few things I I think I should probably share with you but if you want somebody to tell you what to do you should go seek a licensed a licensed investment banker from one of those investment houses so now before you start building an investment portfolio you need to first ascertain the reason for which you want to build this investment portfolio don't just get up and be buying shares and you don't understand what these shares are for you don't understand why you're buying them Ascertain the reason why you want to build an investment portfolio on a whole and an answer of I want to be rich is not enough. You need to go deeper than that. For example, for me, my investment portfolio is for retirement income. It is for me to be able to have um, shares to pass down to my children and my grandchildren. It's for me to make some money. So it's like I have my reasons done you have to dig, dig deep to find out why you want to build this portfolio because when the going gets tough you need to have your reasons down to be able to to drive you and keep you going so figure out the reason and then after that you can get to building now let's talk about building your portfolio in building your portfolio it's important for you to understand that there are certain investment strategies that you can employ I'm going to tell you about a few of these. The first I'm going to tell you about is a value investing strategy. This is what Warren Buffett does. If you don't know Warren Buffett. What do you live under a rock? You need to, um, yeah, go on Google, come from under a rock. I don't know. Warren Buffett is filthy rich and he got filthy rich by investing in the stock market um he has made the value investing strategy extremely popular because that's what he stands by now what is value investing it's simply just finding companies that are underpriced or undervalued you purchase shares in these companies you wait for the market to correct itself when the market corrects itself you your the share price shoots up and you make a profit remember to, I, I i taught you guys what capital gain is in my last video well this is where you would see capital gain most times this is what warren buffett did he would buy shares in companies that are underpriced and then he would wait for the market to correct itself then there would be capital gain the share price would go up capital gain and then that's how he would make money um the next investment strategy i'm going to tell you about is dividend growth strategy what this pretty much is is investors go out in search of companies that have very good dividends and they have good dividend paying policies so what it means is that they pay out good dividends in terms of enough money but they also pay out consistently more or less so you stock up on shares in these companies and that's how you build your portfolio another investment strategy we can explore is the contrary on investing strategy what that means as the name suggests is that these investors go um, contrary to market trends 
So for example, now is a good time for us to explore this strategy because of COVID. COVID came about and everybody in the mother sell them shares because people are scared. So what happens, for example, you have a portfolio valued a million dollars, you check in in three days, four days, and you see that it has gone down to 800,000. So you panic because you're losing your hard earned money. So what you do, you sell off all of the, the shares so you can at least secure the 800,000. You would have lost 200,000 in your mind, but at least you saved the 800,000. At least you're not broke again, right? That's not what the contrarians do. The contrarians look at these things and they do the opposite. They buy shares in these times. In COVID time, they buy share, they do sell. When everybody running to the market, when the market is bullish, they tend to be set. They, they're very on their toes. They're very, it's like them, them ready to sell at any given point. They're not happy when everybody else is happy on the market. They're sad when everybody's happy and they're, they're happy when everybody else is sad. That's how contrarian investors work. The last, cat the last investment strategy we're gonna look at is the growth investing strategy. And how this works is it focuses a lot on capital appreciation or capital gain. Pretty much you try to find a company that is small or that is just starting out, Some, a company that you believe can work based on their business model or their financials look really good for their size or something like that. You look for that type of company because you believe with time, that company's share price is gonna shoot up. So this is a strategy that needs time. This strategy, the growth investment strategy and the value investment strategy, especially these strategies, are strategies that need time to grow. Um, I'm gonna add an, invest an investment strategy in here. Uh, I don't know that this is actually a real legitimate strategy, but it's just something that I have observed. I'm gonna call it the short-term investment strategy. And what it is is that you buy shares for the short term. So you buy shares, the moment you buy it, you know, say you plan to sell it within six months or a year or whatever. You don't plan to keep these shares. You're just in it for the quick buck and you get it and you move. I'd like to call that the short term investment strategy. So, so far we have learned that there is a value investing strategy, the dividend um, growth strategy, we have learned that there is a contrarian investment strategy. We have learned that there is the growth investment strategy and the short-term investment strategy. So which strategy do I use? I use all of the above. Listen, we can just sit down and buy shares now and wait till me at 65 for them get um, for capital gain and for me get rich. Mm -mm. Me not have that kind of time there right now. But I believe it's important, which is why my portfolio is divided into two categories. If you've read my book, The Big Bad Book of Everything, then you would know exactly what I'm talking about. The Big Bad Book of Everything, you can purchase at anapalomino.com or you can use the link below, same link, but you can purchase there. I explained to you how I split up my, my portfolio and the reasons why. And pretty much what it is, is that my portfolio, I think of it in two parts. Part A is the long term, it's retirement. It is for, um, for me to pass down to my children and grandchildren. That's where I have the shares that I, before I purchase these shares, I do real homework on them because I need these shares, these companies to be in existence for when I retire. I need these shares to be in existence for years down the line. So I do homework on these companies, right? These are pretty much your blue chip companies or companies that I believe in that are gonna grow type of a thing. This is where that goes. Um, and I also have part B of my portfolio where it's where all the action happens. It's the short term. It's where I flip and I make money. That's that part. So I use all of the strategies. I don't think I can only, I can't afford to only use one investment strategy. I am not Warren Buffett. I cannot use one um, strategy in the value investing strategy and wait to get rich. I don't, I, listen, I'm not wealthy enough to sit around and do that. I have to use all the strategies to make sure I cover all my bases in the shortest amount of time, the shortest possible time. So part A of my portfolio would utilize the value invest investing strategy, the dividend growth investing strategy, and the growth investing strategy, while part B of my portfolio would employ the contrarian um, strategy and the short term strategy which to point for me to let me point out the contrarian investment strategy can also be the short term investment strategy but it doesn't always have to be right you can pick up some shares 
because everybody else is selling or you can buy some shirts because the market is down and you it turns out that after you've done your research it's actually a good company and you should hold on to the shares so it can be that you can use my strategy which is to use all of them or you can just pick one just to have peace of mind and clarity you can pick one and just make it grow um, but that's pretty much all it is so let me go let me just double back to the investing strategy because I want to help you how do you identify companies that are undervalued or underpriced well, you can use something that most investors use, most value investors use, which is the P.E. ratio. The P.E. ratio is the price earnings ratio. What it means is that it's, as you know, the word ratio suggests, is the relationship between the company's stock price and its earnings per share. Let me break that down into layman terms for you to understand because it was hella complicated for me when I first um, heard of it. All it is, is an indication as to how the market feels about this company at this particular time. So if a company has a high PE ratio, it just means that the market has very high expectations for this company. The market thinks that it's gonna produce high um, revenue in the future high earnings in the future the public slash the market loves this company for future growth if a company has a low pe ratio it means that the market doesn't really feel much about this company right now they probably it's just that people probably don't pick up on the stock yet or not enough um persons have invested in it but um pretty much it's just undervalued right now so value investors love companies with low pe ratios they love this kind of thing because obviously the company is under undervalued the share price is underpriced so you purchase it at this low value because after the market corrects itself the share price is going to shoot up and you make money by virtue of capital gain watch my previous video if you don't know what capital gain is but that's how it works how do you work out the p ratio you find the company's share price and divide that by the earnings per share. Now let me explain where you find these numbers because it was so difficult for me before until I found this out. Let's take the, the, the share price first. How do you find the share price? Go on Jamaica Stock Exchange's website, the JSC's website or the JSC app. Type in the company you're trying to find and the share price, the latest share price will pop up. Take that number and divide it by the earnings per share. Where do you find the earnings per share? You find it in the company's audited financial statements, um, the company's profit and loss statements. Um, how do you find the financial statements? Go to Google, type in the company's name and the financial statements and the year, and you will see the statements pop up. Go, go, go through the statement, go through till you find the profit and loss statement or the income statement. Look for earnings per share. You will see a number beside it, probably $2.45 or $1, whatever. You find a number beside that. So you divide the, part, the share price by this number, the earnings per share, and you will get the P.E. ratio. And that's how you know what the P.E. ratio is. Now, what is a good P.E. ratio, meaning an average P.E. ratio? I would say between 15 and maybe 17 to 20 is a, a fairly priced um is a fairly priced share or it's fairly valued company a, fa a fairly valued company anything below 15 or 17 i would say is an undervalued company anything above 20 i would say is an overvalued company or an overpriced share so and that's just from my analysis and from my observation remember i'm not a licensed investment broker or banker right but this is just to help you out a little bit Another way you can use the P.E. ratio to find undervalued companies um, and, and this way is the way I actually prefer is to compare the P.E. ratio of two or more companies in the same industry. For example, let's say you calculate the P.E. ratio for NCB and Scotia. NCBs, for argument's sake, NCB has a P.E. ratio of 11 while so Scotia has a P.E. ratio of 12. It would mean that NCB may be the better buy if you're a value investor because NCB has the lower PE ratio. I prefer this, this method because if you are comparing the PE ratio of a Wisinko and an NCB, there are different market forces influencing the two companies. There are different regulations in terms of legal regulations affecting each company. So obviously they would have different numbers. They would reflect different numbers. 
So find a good buy by comparing the PE ratio of these companies. You don't have to just use two PE ratios alone. Is ratio the proper word? Anyway, you don't have, I don't know if ratio is the proper word, but you don't, you, you don't have to just use two. You can put the PE ratio of all the companies listed on the JSC in the same industry, and that's how you can find the undervalued companies. Now, how do you employ the dividend growth strategy? Simply just find companies that have good dividend paying practices. Do they um, believe in paying out a lot of their net profits? How much of their net profits did they pay out last year? How much of their net profits did they pay out the year before? Do they believe in rolling over, rolling over, rolling over, that type of a thing? What is the actual share price? So how do you find this? Literally just go company by company, do your research and figure it out. Just use the principles that I've explained to you and you will be able to find it. In terms of um, contrarian, just look at the market trends. COVID is a big example. And in case you don't know, you should probably be buying shares now because everybody, the share prices are low. We are getting them at a discount now. The market is going to correct itself and so the share price is gonna shoot up and you would have made money by virtue of capital gain. Remember, I'm not a licensed investment banker. I'm gonna tell you what I am doing. So you can decide if you wanna follow. But that's how the contrarian works in terms of the growth. You literally just, you can use the PE ratio or examine your habits, read the news. Do you see companies coming up that you think are gonna do well? Um, do you know the, the, the board or the managing director or the CEO or the founder of these companies? Do you know them as a person? Do you understand how they are? Do you know how they think? Do you think that they're gonna make this work at all costs? Like that kind of a thing. So you're, you're basically putting your faith in the person and the company. And that's all it is. So I've given you a lot of information to digest. I'll reiterate so you understand. First, we talked about um, you need to figure out the reason for which you need your investment portfolio. Mine is for retirement income, to have shares to pass on to my children, and to make money in the short term. Those are my reasons for my investment portfolio. Then you need to find out what strategy you're gonna employ. You need to find a strategy and stick to it, no matter what, stick to the strategy and the plan. I gave you some strategies. We have the value investing strategy. We have the dividend, uh, the dividend uh, growth strategy. We have the contrarian strategy. We have the growth strategy. And we have my strategy that I've named, the short-term strategy. I told you what my strategy is, which is to employ all of them because I want to cover all my bases at once. I want to take care of the long term and I want to take care of the short term. Um, so you can pick one or you can use all of them like me. I've also explained to you how you actually use these strategies, how it works. Value investing, you can use the PE ratio. I told you it's the share price divided by the earnings per share, which you can find in the company's audited financial statements. I also explained to you how to find a, a good dividend paying stock. I explained to you how the contrarian thing work. I explained to you the growth thing too. So you have all the information. You no longer have any excuses as to why you are not investing, right? So I will see you in my next video. Bye.